If you want an uninterrupted, hassle-free source of large amounts of backup electric power for your home, business, or cottage, regardless of what happens in the outside world, a home standby generator, or HSB, is definitely worth looking at. These stationary units sit permanently outdoors in a weatherproof metal housing, and they're permanently wired to the electrical panel in your house. HSBs switch themselves on automatically when the grid goes down, then off when power comes back on again, ensuring constant electricity with just a short delay of several seconds while the engine of the HSB fires up. Powered by either natural gas or propane, there's no need for liquid refueling. More and more people are investing in HSBs because they're convenient and effective. This mature and proven technology works well and it delivers critical electricity even if you're not awake or at home when you need it. This video covers everything you need to know to decide if an HSB really is for you. Advantages of a home standby generator. Hassle-free backup power in large quantities are what HSBs are all about. Every HSB is constantly monitoring the state of the electrical grid, standing by, ready to fire up automatically within seconds of a grid outage. Typical HSBs put out 8 kilowatts to 22 kilowatts of power, with larger models able to power entire modern homes, as usual, during an outage. Although HSBs do cost more than portable backup generators, they deliver more power and a lot more convenience for this added investment. Do you want backup power to kick in whether you're at home or not? Do you travel for extended periods and worry about the furnace, sump pump, fridge, freezer, and security system continuing to work during an outage while you're away? Perhaps you have a medical condition that requires essential equipment remain operational no matter how long an outage persists. Or maybe you simply don't want the hassle of pulling a portable generator out of the garage, connecting it, firing it up, then keeping it topped up with fresh gasoline from a can during an outage. Then there's the fact that the enclosure of an HSB is weatherproof, unlike portable generators that need to be protected from rain and snow during use in harsh weather. All of these reasons and more are why HSBs are one of the most popular generator categories right now. How standby generators work. All HSBs have four main components. Housed within the outdoor cabinet, there's an engine and alternator connected together. As the engine runs, it spins the shaft of the alternator, converting rotational motion of the shaft into electric power for your home. Another component is the transfer switch located near your electrical panel. The best transfer switches can be installed indoors or outdoors, and in all cases, connect either grid power to your home or generator power, but never both at the same time. The fourth part of every HSB installation are the cables running underground to bring power to your home and communication signals back and forth to the HSB. With an HSB installed, it's business as usual as long as grid power is present. The engine in the enclosure just sits there, waiting and silent. When the grid goes down, the transfer switch does two things immediately. First, it disconnects your household system from the grid. And second, it sends a signal for the engine of the HSB to start. It does this automatically, relying on a couple of internal batteries to turn the engine over and get it running. With the engine running, backup power is then fed into your home until the grid comes back on again. When this happens, the transfer switch detects the change, it disconnects the HSB from the grid, then shuts down the engine until the next time it's needed, all automatically. To ensure quick and easy starting, HSBs do something called self-exercising. This means they're programmed to fire up and run for a few minutes each week or month, typically at night, even when the grid is up and live. This regular operation makes it easier for the engine to start when an outage does occur, and it also tops up the charge of the internal batteries that turn the engine over so it can start when needed. Choosing a home standby generator. Except for brand reputation and local dealer support, how much power you need is the main thing to consider when choosing an HSB. It needn't be large enough to power everything in your home all at once, but a large model will be able to power most things. Something called kilowatts is the yardstick for power consumption when considering an HSB or any generator for that matter. 
Think of it this way. A 22 kilowatt model delivers roughly the same amount of power as a 100 amp electrical panel connected to the grid. That's enough for most homes without extensive electric heat and can even power housewide air conditioning. One new thing to consider as you shop is something generically called load management modules. Not all HSB brands offer them. This one is from Champion and works with their Axis 14 kilowatt and 22 kilowatt models. It constantly senses the load created by high demand 240 volt appliances such as air conditioners, stoves, clothes dryers, and water heaters. When more power than the HSB can provide is demanded, the load management modules actually decide which high demand appliances take priority based on how the system is configured. For instance, if you're cooking supper on your stove and your HSB is close to maxed out, the load management system might shut down the water heater temporarily while the stove is being used, then back on when the stove is off. Not everything needs power at the same time and smart load management modules make the most of the generating capacity you have. It's like having a much larger generator than you actually do with lower installation costs and better fuel economy. Installing a home standby generator. This is work for a professional, but it is helpful to understand the steps involved. First, you need to identify the right size of unit for your home, then decide on a location for the generator and the transfer switch. A good local dealer can help you with both these things. Many HSBs are designed to sit directly on the ground on a bed of crushed stone, but creating a pad with precast patio slabs is a premium option that may be best where you live. HSB location has to be far enough away from buildings, windows, and vents, so exhaust gases pose no danger. You'll also need a supply of propane or natural gas nearby to power the engine. This may affect where in your yard you put your HSB. Two temporary trenches will also have to be dug in your yard during installation. One for the cables going to your house, and another trench for the propane or natural gas line leading to your HSB. Total installation time involves a day or two of work by a pair of experienced installers. What to expect with a home standby generator. Having an HSB connected to your house makes most grid blackout events a non-issue. Besides lots of automatic backup power, you can expect your HSB to fire up automatically every week or month as it self-exercises. These units are quiet, so it's not disruptive even if you schedule the runtime to happen at night. You'll also have a bit of regular maintenance work to do, changing oil and filters, either yourself or you can hire someone to do it. It's a lot like maintaining a lawnmower, just working on a bigger machine. One thing to consider is the fuel used by your HSB. These machines don't operate on gasoline or diesel fuel because both go stale in time and also require manual refilling of the tank. If you have access to natural gas for your HSB, that's definitely financially preferable to propane from an on-site tank, since natural gas is so much cheaper than propane for a given unit of energy. Also, understand that electricity produced by your HSB will be more expensive per kilowatt hour than grid power. This is especially true if you're running on propane, and it leads to an important suggestion. Besides the higher initial cost, compared with portable generators, there are two things you need to realize. First, an HSB is a single application machine. Unlike portable generators, you won't be able to use it to power anything other than your home. Another detail has to do with that operational cost that I mentioned. If your home is heated electrically, then you might consider using your electric heat in a limited way if the grid outage lasts for more than a few hours. While the HSB may have enough power to handle electric heaters, you'll pay more to run them off your HSB than the grid, especially if you're using propane. Electricity provided by an HSB running on propane is roughly four times the cost of a kilowatt hour of power from the grid. But a non-electric source of backup heat, such as a gas fireplace or wood stove, is a wise feature to have in the event of an extended grid down event if you rely on electric heat. Maintaining your HSB. Like any machine with an engine, all HSBs need maintenance. Your owner's manual will explain maintenance items, but changing engine oil is the main one. 
Oil and oil filters should be changed after every 50 to 200 hours of runtime or every two years if the HSB hasn't run much. Change oil after the first five hours of runtime during the break-in period with a new HSB. Synthetic oil should not be run longer between oil changes, but it will make your HSB easier to start in cold weather because synthetic oil doesn't thicken as much in winter. Also, you should check the fault code indicator weekly on the diagnostic panel inside the cabinet, plus inspect and clean the air filter every two years or 100 hours of operation as part of the overall engine tune-up. Home standby generators are definitely here to stay because they satisfy a real need in the home energy scene. Check out homegeneratorselector.com for help choosing the right size of unit. Getting an HSB installed is not for every household, but it will move you one big step towards household resilience and security.